the power of representation and why we need mm -hmm. it. And not only that, but why we need our people to believe in ourselves, believe right. that we can be at these table, believe that we can have these conversations and we can be authors and we can be creatives and we can do these things. We're human just right. like everybody else, man. What up, it's Dramos and this is the recap. Of course, as I do each and every week, breaking down some of the biggest headlines from this last week. Now, my guest helping me do so, man, he's a fellow podcaster. He is host of the Latin Wealth Podcast. My guy, Chris Beloso, will be hopping on in just a minute. But before that, I want to just touch on a quick story uh, that's been tickling my fancy from this last week. Now, our boy, you know, the, the human cheese doodle that is Donald Trump just can't seem to keep his name out of the headlines or, or people can't seem to keep his name out their mouth. And listen, why I always sort of have this this thing in the back of my head, you know, I always keep this in the back of my head of, you know, what is this Donald Trump obsession? It always just gets like blown up whenever I see one of these new crazy stories and I remind myself, wow, this man is a crazy enigma and we need to learn more and more about him before he potentially gets reelected and blows up the entire world as we know it, right? Now, this this new book that has dropped all kinds of alleged, of course, you know, uh, testimonials, if you will, of, of Donald Trump and the fear that his staff had that he would be the downfall of this country and actually even his own wife uh was was quoted as being rattled by the coronavirus and actually was convinced that donald trump was screwing up welcome to what it was like to live like the rest of us during the pandemic during the the quarantine as we watched as this idiotic president talked to people on national television suggesting maybe they should drink bleach yeah that that told us all we needed to know about uh, the person in charge and his credibility when it came to talking about this this pandemic, right? And she even pleaded with him. Like, I often wonder, like, what is Melania doing during all this time when Trump is doing these idiotic things? And she even pleaded with him to please take the, the, uh, the pandemic more seriously, right? And again, during his four-year tender at the White House, his wife wasn't the only one in fear, right? It said that many of his senior advisors, again, were worried about the fate of the country. And Donald Trump's volatility, they say, is on full blast here in this book. And I'm only going to touch on a couple things because it's just, man, so, so ridiculous. And, and to the point that these advisors, uh, his own national security team, actually feared that that they could possibly stumble into a, a nuclear war with North Korea or even ignite a conflict with Iran uh, during the last days of his presidency. And then this guy, you know, obviously with no regard for for national security, is is holding a cocktail party at, at Mar-a-Lago and then told his guests that he had to leave early back to Washington because fears that Iran may be trying to assassinate him. And I know you're like, what's the big deal? He's just talking. You're the president of the United States. You're supposed to keep people calm and not talk about the idea that we may have an ensuing war with Iran or some sort of conflict. And then, of course, there is the Vladimir Putin and, and Russian obsession. People said we have no idea why Trump was siding with Vladimir Putin so much. It was almost as if Putin had something over him. Again, not anything new, but just a dark reminder of the person that was in charge of this country for four years. And the last thing I want to touch on, because, of course, it touches close to my heart as a Puerto Rican, was this whole talk of, of Greenland, right? And the idea that, that Donald Trump wanted to buy Greenland. And, and actually, what's scary is this was often uh, sort of brushed off as, as not being a real thing or, or not being a, a serious conversation. And, and people even quoted Trump as saying he would throw Puerto Rico in the deal to, to sweeten it. And... While this was brushed off as, as not being real, there's actually public revelations now that, that talk about how serious these conversations were, that Trump was even supposed to go and, and meet with the, the Danish leader, and that he had his national security advisor, John Bolton, act as a back channel to the Danish government. And then, of course, when things broke publicly, that's when the deal went, went down the tubes because of the bad press that it got. And then, like Trump always is, you know, the kid who wants to take his ball home when he gets mad, he called the Danish leader, quote unquote, nasty for rejecting his idea of buying Greenland and then canceled a trip to Copenhagen that he was supposed to have. 
<sighs> Again, nothing new, but man, scary, scary confirmation of the dangers that we were in having this idiot in chief in the White House for four years. Now, with that said, let's bring on my guest today to help me break down some of these other headlines. He is a podcast host just like myself. He hosts the Beautiful Struggle podcast as well as the Latin Wealth podcast. My guy, Chris Beloso, how you feeling, bro? What's going on, bro? I'm blessed and well. Happy to be here. Thank you for uh, allowing me to get on the show. It's an honor. Of course, man. Of course. So I, I want to talk about, you know, obviously the the podcast. I think what you're you're doing with it is is incredible. It's amazing for our community. But mm -hmm. I want to first and foremost touch on a couple of current events, if that's cool with you. Let's get it. All right. So the the first one I want to touch on, we'll, we'll we'll start a little bit lighter here. We we celebrate somebody like a bad bunny, right? And uh, and all the incredible things that he's doing. Mm -hmm. And now this isn't necessarily something he's personally doing, but something he has inspired. And uh, it's actually making me wish that that I was back in college to experience it. But <laughs> uh, he he's actually having a class taught about him at San Diego State University, which is is mm -hmm. super dope so it said that students at, at sdsu are actually going to be able to delve deeper into uh his influence in the world of of politics and music and fashion and culture uh, as well as exploring his contributions to challenging the norms of of masculinity and as well as how puerto rico is perceived to the outside mm -hmm. world so all incredible stuff and uh, i want to shout out the the Professor is teaching this, Dr. Uh, Nathan Shea Rodriguez, who actually taught a, a class on Selena as well uh, mm -hmm. prior to this one. But, but man, you you, you see stuff like this. Uh, how does it how does it make you feel uh, about the culture when you see it being celebrated like that? Yeah. So initially, I thought it was this is pretty dope that they're doing this, but also mm -hmm. thought it's it's interesting because we're in a place right now where Bad Bunny is. Is, is honestly the biggest artist in the world. Let's, let's just state the facts. Yep, um, facts. And a lot of people kind of obsess over him. And I don't want this to turn into something where I'm, I'm going to the Bad Bunny class and we're going right. to learn about Bad Bunny, right? <laughs> right, right. Because there's there's deeper topics, like you mentioned, that need to be discussed and have mm -hmm. conversations around, right? So I think if they <clears throat> obviously talk about him and the accomplishments he's had and where he's came from i think that's super dope but also have a conversation around okay what is he speaking about in his song right what mm -hmm. is he talking about um you know why is he dressing like this what is he trying right. to you know if we start to have those type of conversation um i'm for sure all for it i'm all for it either way to be honest because we're <laughs> celebrating our people but right. you know what, what's needed right now is these conversation around like look What's going on in Puerto Rico? The, the oppression, the, gent the gentrification, mm. and whatnot. If we can start having those conversations in these classrooms, man, I think that's that's a huge one right there. That's huge. Yeah, I think that that's a a great point because it's almost like a gift and a curse when you think about his music, yeah. right? Because there, he obviously he's he's the biggest artist in the world. I think no question. And mm -hmm. it's not just Latinos who are listening and appreciating his music, mm -hmm. but to your point, when it when you when you you know want to really break it down, he's saying a lot in his music, and he's making for a lot sure. of statements in his art, you know, in the videos and and what he stands for in concerts and things like that. And uh, while it's obviously a gift that he's sort of mixing the medicine with the candy, if we will, right, with like mm -hmm. you know really just like banging tracks that people can dance yeah. to. But at the same time, mm -hmm. it, it's a bit of a loss if people can't understand what he's actually saying and like the realness that he's talking. No, 100 percent, 100 percent agree with you for sure. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I thought that was a, a great point. But, yeah, I think any time that our culture is being brought mm -hmm. into the, the world of academia like this, I mm -hmm. love taking up spaces in places that we're not supposed to, you know, quote unquote, not supposed to be at, you know? Yeah, I 100 percent agree with you. And it's interesting because it's happening at San Diego State. And I'm from California. So you mm. go to California and the majority of the Latinos out there, they're from Mexico. They're Mexican. Right. So um, I think it's, it's dope that, you know, they're, they're teaching a class about a Puerto Rican in mm. uh, San Diego, which is, which is super dope. You know, it definitely yeah. shows that they're appreciating us. And that's how it should be, man. It should be like Absolutely. that all the way around. Like We should be appreciating other Latinos and supporting them um, and learning about their culture and some of the impact other Latinos are doing as well. So that, that's a win for them, for sure. Yeah, that's a, a, another great point for sure. So, I mean, let, let's talk about something else that uh, I'm trying to wrap my brain around. Uh, I'm a bit 
okay <laughs> with it, but not, I don't know. It's this world of AI, right? Artificial mm -hmm. intelligence. And I mean, you and I both, uh, you know, exist in a digital world as well with podcasting mm -hmm. and, and, you know, using social media to promote that and all the above. So obviously we have accepted this sort of like digital space, right? But the line also you, you begin to wonder is when do we go too far, right? Mm -hmm. And now you obviously have the metaverse and people are like existing and doing comedy shows in like the metaverse mm -hmm. and all kinds of interesting things like that. And now there's this discussion about the world of art, like like actual art art, you know, and uh, they're talking about how like AI art, it may be like a wave of the future of like actual mm -hmm. artificial intelligence, painting pictures and and doing mm -hmm. all these different things. So, I mean. In, in this world of AI that seems to be quickly coming at us, kind of where do you stand? What is your line? Are you embracing it? What, what was kind of your deal? Uh, I think I'm definitely embracing it. I think it's just another tool for people to express themselves. Uh, it's mm -hmm. another resource for people to create. Um, right. And if we're giving more tools and resources to the creative, I'm all for it. I can definitely see how people are thinking, oh, we're just going to go straight into digital art and physical yeah. art. It's not going to be valued anymore. Mm. I don't know if I believe that. I think both mm. can coexist at the same time. Sure. Um, you know, when we think of artificial uh, AI art and whatnot, I think the first person I think of is uh, Beeple. I think mm. he does type of that that art. He's one of the most uh, well-known and he sells NFTs and whatnot. Right, but, right. Um, I think it's just another tool, right? If we didn't have that tools and, you know, that just closes off a lane of artists that, that can't create and that can't express themselves, right? It's mm -hmm. going to be interesting to see how far this thing goes. You mentioned right. Metaverse and Web3 and all that. Uh, we definitely haven't even scratched the surface of any of that. You know, if anybody right. thinks they know where it's going to go, I don't, I don't think you can trust their word because right. we're just so early into it, man. Like yeah. we... There's so many people that are developing currently right now. Um, and it's just going to be very interesting to see where this whole thing goes. And uh, when we have kids and whatnot, they're going to be right smack in the middle of all this. Right, right. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I, I think it's only going to get weirder before it begins to normalize. Sure. <laughs> because that's, that's just that's kind of... Fact. The, the way things go with new technology, and I will say, historically speaking, if you try and fight against technology, technology wins 10 mm -hmm. times out of 10, right? There's no fighting 100%. it. You have to embrace it if you want to uh, succeed in, in certain industries and, and probably in most mm -hmm. industries, honestly. Um, you know, but but yeah, it's definitely going to get really weird before it gets better. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was also that that artist that got signed to a major label that was like a mm -hmm. AI artist, like a, a musician yeah. was a rapper, and then they got dropped because crazy. of the controversy. Right. But so, but to me, it... It, it begins to then sort of cheapen the real artistry to a degree, right? And and listen, mm -hmm. I think you have older musicians who are going to say the current age of artists because of Pro Tools and the ease of technology, mm -hmm. um, you know, they have cheapened music to a degree, right? And and things like TikTok kind of being uh, mm -hmm. this launching platform for, for artists has sort of made a bit of that fast food culture, mm -hmm. if you will. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, what what do you think about the argument of of it sort of cheapening it? I mean, and obviously greatness will will always rise to the top, but there's still going to be that weird middle ground of like trying to figure out do we celebrate this or not? Yeah, I you just said it. You just took the words out of my mouth. I just think greatness will always rise to the top. The cream of the mm -hmm. crop will always will always come out on top. I think there's always going to be uh, with something new. There's always going to be that weird middle ground. Like like you said, should we support yeah. this? Who, who are these people? Like mm -hmm. the whole. Uh, no disrespect the whole soundcloud rapper scene like right, right, right. that that probably adds to people probably think that's adding to cheapening rap and hip hop sure. and whatnot but um I, I think there's some good artists that came out of that era mm -hmm. um and there's going to be a new era of hip hop and artistry that that comes as well so i just always think um the strong will prevail the great ones will prevail and that's it right and everybody right, no. will have to just uh not to cut you off everybody's just no. going to have to address and and learn yeah, no, that, I think that's a that's a fact. I mean, I, I, I being in more of the music lane, I always hear that argument about the idea of it cheapening music and a lot yeah. of these like one hit wonders and all that stuff. But there were one hit wonders throughout the course of musical history, right? Sure. And the the artists that were truly great found a way to to stick around, you know, even mm -hmm. in changing times and, and changing uh, trends and, and things like that. 
yeah. um there there's definitely going to be a lot of garbage before we kind yeah. of get to like this this tipping point i think the like the nft world we saw that a lot where it was like the wild west uh -huh. and it's starting to maybe level out a little bit more yeah. where you know uh the real value is being seen and and not anybody can just throw together some digital crap and uh become rich off of it i hope at least yeah absolutely and the thing you said about the one hit wonders i mean i think it's okay to celebrate you know some of that you know it's, it's a moment yeah. at time you know it's a moment it's um you know we hear some of these one hit wonder man that was a one hit wonder back in the day but that was a great song man i remember i right, was this right, age listening to this song so that's a fact i mean it's it's, it's art man it's, uh I, I think whatever helps people get to what they want to accomplish um it's it's all good with me like you said it's going to get to a point where it's going to get very weird uh, mm -hmm. more things are becoming more acceptable and it's like back in the days this this wasn't you know what i'm saying i wasn't looking at this at seven years old right, you know what right. i mean um it is going to get more weird but um it's just another tool for people to express themselves i think yeah and, and and to that point i think overarching the good outweighs the bad because it's also eliminated the middleman who took advantage of many artists mm -hmm. for far too long you know and for i sure. think that's the the beauty in it is that these artists, if they play their cards right and they do blow up on TikTok, have far more leverage than any other artist coming 100%. out the gate before. And I think that's a, a great sort of business model that is in favor of not being taken advantage of, which sadly many artists were throughout the course of uh, of, of history, you know? Yeah, um, absolutely. Now, now moving on to, to one last thing I want to touch on because I think it, it affects both of us. And it was a, a really staggering stat that I saw. And it was from my guy, Chris Rivas, who has a, a book out called Brown Enough. But he was talking about uh, how only 5% of books written since 1950 were by non-white authors. And this is according to a 2020 study uh, by the New Nuts. York Times. Is it like it, you think like it doesn't feel that way, but when you see numbers like that, it's like, God damn, there's still so much work to be done, right? Man, that's when you, when I, when I seen that, that was just, that blew me away. 5%, yeah. man, that's right. And you know how many books are out there? So right. it's, it's, it, it really is challenging, man. And that just goes to speak to, um, the power of representation and why we need mm -hmm. it. And not only that, but why we need our people to believe in ourselves, believe right. that we can be at these table, believe that we can have these conversations and we can be authors and we can be creatives and we can do these things. We're human just right. like everybody else, man. And, mm -hmm. if, and you know, um, let's be honest, uh, the black and brown community, we're, you know, we're the foundation of, of a lot of, you know, culture, you know what I'm saying? Yep. They feed off of yep. us, they make money off of us. So why yeah. can't we unite and come together and you know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, it's just, when I heard that, that was pretty, that's crazy, man. I didn't even think about that. I'm looking at all the books I have right here and I'm like, that, right. it's, a, it's a fact. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. And that, that, that is 100% true. I mean, yeah, like I've, I'm, you know, I'm working on a, on a book. So I've been like in that world with the idea mm -hmm. of pitching and, and meeting people. And like, I'm, I'm just realizing like, Many of the people I've spoken to, reached out to, been in contact with are not people of color, you know, mm -hmm. and and it's no surprise why they don't understand certain nuances or the importance of certain stories, mm -hmm. you know, uh, mm -hmm. and and that's obviously a, a, a problem because there are many of us out there, right? It's not like there's, you know, lack of Latinos who are mm -hmm. interested in hearing stories that represent them. It, it, it really is. There are just not enough people of color in yeah. in positions of power and, and I, I said latinos but also the black community but sure. there are not enough people of color in positions of power uh signing the checks to, to quote uh chris rivas you know that 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 would really make the difference and, and help you know amplify all of our voices no absolutely that's a fact right there yeah for sure so i mean let's then move into to your world i mean i know mm -hmm. you're you're juggling between two podcasts yeah. uh i mean let, let's uh first and foremost start with the latin wealth podcast which is how you and i met i, I just yeah. thought it was such a, a a great idea and so much needed for for our community the conversations around financial literacy and and, and all of that so uh first and foremost let's talk about how kind of you got inspired to to do that work and for anybody not familiar kind of give them a little rundown of what it is you guys do yeah absolutely so i've been podcasting for going on four years now and mm. um you know the beautiful struggle it's it, it, the beautiful struggle podcast is my baby and whatnot but i found a, a gap in the market where when we talk about financial literacy entrepreneurship yeah. business and things of that nature there's not that one platform 
that's kind of uniting everybody together, right? right Are there right. people talking about financial literacy and business and whatnot? Absolutely. And we want to yeah. showcase them as much as possible. But I found that there was a gap out there and I just know that, yes, there's people out here that are doing it, but we need to continue to push to have these conversations. So uh, we have guests on um, talking about different subjects, whether it's uh, we just had uh, a fashion artist on on recently talking about how to get into fashion, mm -hmm. uh, people talking about crypto, real estate, all these things. And my thing is I want to create a community of people where we can lean on each other for these things. So if mm -hmm. we if we have somebody that's an author and they need to go to somebody that writes the check, well, let yeah. me tap in with the Latin wealth community because there's probably somebody in there that can mm -hmm. do so. Oh, sure. I want to invest. I want to invest back into Puerto Rico. I want to buy some land back mm -hmm. where my family come from. Oh, let me tap in with the Latin wealth platform because they got uh, realtors that are in that platform, in that community that mm. can connect me and help me out. So sure. that's what I want to do. And I want to honestly, my, my goal, my vision is to make this um, one of the biggest platform and communities for Latinos mm -hmm. in respect to building wealth. Right. And I, I don't think it's just monetary wealth. Right. There's, everybody has a different definition of wealth it can right. be like man i'm a single mom i got three kids i just want more time to spend with my kids right, but let me right. let me start this side hustle let me start this business that's going to allow me to give me my time back so i can go to my kids soccer practice the basketball practice mm -hmm. or whatever the case may have you so that's what it's about man it's about creating community it's about giving back as much as possible um I, you know you and i have spoken about some ideas that we have was mm -hmm. a platform and yeah, that's it, man. I'm just, I'm super passionate about it and I'm, I'm definitely going all in with this one. No, I, I love that. And I think it's important because I think oftentimes, and this isn't um, a dig or anything like that, but mm -hmm. I think oftentimes as Latinos, since we kind of fall in the middle, right? We mm -hmm. either have to go to, you know, uh, white platforms to, to get our information mm -hmm. or black platforms, right? And, and, you know, it's no disrespect to, to either sure. one. And I think that there's amazing platforms in the black community, like the Breakfast Club, that have been life changing for so mm -hmm. many people. But th there is always for me that there was always this longing of like, if it would always fall a little bit short of the, the depth of conversation I was hoping for as it pertains to me and my community. Right. So mm -hmm. I, I think that that's why what, what you're doing is, is so important. I'm assuming that that was probably also yeah. much of the, the inspiration uh, in you sort of noticing that that same kind of void in the, the marketplace. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. Um, definitely seen that void, man. And we just wanted to do everything we can to fill it. Um, and just rep again, it goes back to representation. It's everything, right. man. We want to show Latinos, they come in all shapes, colors, and sizes, man. Like, mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't know that based on right. where they're at. Maybe if you're on the West coast, you only see, uh, yeah. one particular look of a Latino, but right. you know, we come in all colors, man. And I want to show that it doesn't matter who you look like, where you come mm -hmm. from. Um, you can do it too. And I'm yeah. going to show you by bringing people on that have done it and that have came from the same place that you have, uh, that you came from. And we're just going to all connect, right? And just build as it. much as possible. Yeah. No, that's beautiful, bro. So the, the Beautiful Struggle Podcast, Latin Wealth Podcast, people can find that anywhere they get uh, yeah. podcasts. Where can people tap in with you on, on social media? So you can tap in with me on Instagram. You can just type in Chris Bales. So on Instagram, I'll pop up. Same thing with Latin Wealth. Same thing with Beautiful Struggle if you want to tap in with there. Anywhere that you listen to a podcast, Apple, Spotify, type in, it'll come up. Um, and yeah, man, that's it. You know, thank you for having me on this platform, man. I of see course. you. You you inspire me. I'm proud of you, bro. I uh, appreciate and, that, man, um, ex real. extremely Extremely happy for you, bro, for sure. Thank you, my bro. I appreciate you, man. Yes, sir. Man, big shout out to my guy, Chris Beloso, for hopping on today's show. Definitely go check out the Latin Wealth Podcast, something I highly recommend. I personally enjoy it so much. I think it's such an incredible platform to have and so important for our community. So make sure you go check that out. And uh, while you're at it, go check out my podcast, Life as a Gringo, which just premiered season two this last week. Now, with that said, of course, I always want to end on some positivity, and we'll do it in the form of a positive quote. Now, this week's quote comes to us from Bob Marley, and it says, the greatness of a man is not how much wealth he acquires, but his integrity and his ability to affect those around him positively. And I just wanted to, to read this quote, aside from it being inspiring, 
I also just think that there's this confusion happening in this world right now, social media era, this country, whatever you want to call it, uh, where we mistake somebody who's wealthy as somebody that we should look up to, right? And and sure, there are plenty of wealthy people that deserve, you know, credit and deserve to be, you know, looked up to as mentors and inspirations. But wealth alone is not the reason why they are a mentor or somebody that we should be following, right? And we see this once again with our former cheese doodle and chief, uh, Donald Trump, right? Just because somebody has accrued wealth doesn't mean they are someone that we should be looking up to or propping up as some sort of hero, right? And and I love that idea of integrity being something that we, we really focus in on, right? Because in today's world with, uh, man, so many con artists and get rich quick schemes and negative behavior being rewarded both you know in the virtual world as well as in real life you know it's important to remember what really matters in this life and what is something to be celebrated and that is someone with sound moral integrity and i will always stand by that you know regardless of whatever way the the world is 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 moving i think that that's the cornerstone of of human life and, and happiness and a, a healthy society and with that said thank y'all so much for tuning into this week's episode i'll catch y'all next time and until then stay safe and we'll talk soon bye